<laughs> We're gonna go help animal control. All Richard told me is that he got a complaint from a neighbor about a dog being abused and neglected. And I said, oh, are you there now? And he goes, Tia, it's awful. Richard from Animal Control called me about a potential dog abuse situation. And he goes, I want you to come take a look at it. He goes, because I may have to get the deputy involved to, you know, to file charges. I'm like, okay, all right. So it's like a good Samaritan neighbor that mm -hmm. you see. Yeah. Well, good for them for saying that. I know. That. That's awesome. Right there. I didn't know the sheriffs were going to be here. Seeing the sheriff's department already there, it actually gives me a sense of more support. You know, knowing that they're stepping in and they're going to make sure that something is done, you know, to the person that did this. Hey, pup, pup. Okay. Oh, no. oh my god. Baby, it's stuck. Look. Oh my god. Hi, Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. After hearing this puppy crying for days, um, a good Samaritan called it in to animal control. After seeing how emaciated this puppy is and seeing the conditions that she's being forced to live in, you know, it's no wonder that she's been crying. It's such a sad situation. Are they home or no? No. No. Come here. Come here. Come here. So friendly. I know. And you know it's been here for a long time. Look how old this group is. She has. She can't even go anywhere. Yeah, she can't even go anywhere. She's yeah. Caught. She's. That's what I'm saying. She's stuck. I don't think this puppy would have lasted another week. In this heat, days. I, you know, it's just like it's a puppy. I mean, it's bad enough for like an adult animal, but it's a little puppy. Like why? Okay, here's the thing, guys. Let me give you a little. I took dogs in from Katrina that had been without food for three weeks to a month. That was fatter than that. I swear to God. So that's how you can gauge it, that that's been weeks and weeks and weeks with no food. This is not even neglect, this is cruelty. You know, you get to a point where it doesn't become neglect anymore. Like, this is just like someone just not even feeding their dog for weeks and not being here. After picking this puppy up and seeing that she weighs a few pounds, you know, having the sheriff's department there, someone's gonna have to answer to this. That's so Thanks. sad. So no, thank you guys, thank you. Thank you. Richard, thank you. this emaciated it's not just a matter of just feeding them you don't just put a big bowl of food out there and say go at it you know it's it's you got to feed them gradually God, disgusting so disgusting horrible. this puppy's probably filled with parasites filled so you know m2 is going to take her to the vet you know immediately I got a call that Gunn has gotten through surgery. How are you? You know, her belly was huge. Probably one of the worst and strangest things I've ever seen. So I'm just hoping that she's gonna be okay. Come here, beautiful. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dr. Kristen's liposuction. <laughs> Little tummy tuck. When Gunn came out, was shocking. I mean, it was shocking. Half of her body mass was gone. It's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> oh She's 34 pounds now. Look at you. She's like, I don't know what the big fuss is. Once I knew it wasn't going to be heart failure, I was like, oh, you know, it's probably going to be something so bad. And, and we yeah, knew it wasn't going to be puppies, you right. know, from the ultrasound. The last thing in the world I imagined was that it was a tumor associated with an ovary. It was an almost 12 pound tumor that started off growing in her ovaries. It's like inserting a bowling ball inside of you. And then my biggest fear was that, you know, being that big, it was gonna be stuck to the everything and I wasn't gonna be able to remove it or it was gonna be spread everywhere, you know. 
she was a little shocky after surgery and um, we did end up having to give her a little blood but mm -hmm. she um, after that you know after we kind of got control of all that she did great. You're not supposed to be able to take you know a third of your body weight out your pressures are all kind of accommodated that mass and then if you suddenly take it out if that difference in the pressures and, and the volume can cause you to go into shock and die. Talk about keeping you humble and keeping you on your toes you know of all the things that was not on my list. She's just like nothing's wrong. And her blood work looks great. God. Nothing wrong. And she's, she's a sweet. Like, yeah. Probably put the Superman collar on her. Yeah. <laughs> I was like you deserve this. Gun is still recuperating. She's got to deal with heartworm treatment next. She's not out of the woods yet, but um, it's looking promising. All right, Gun. Come here, you. Come here. <laughs> oh my God, you are amazing. You are amazing. Personality You yeah. are amazing. I have never seen anything like that in my life. Me neither. All right, kiddo. Gun's recovery process is going to take a while. Probably say, probably total about a year. Oh, no, don't jump. We just had surgery. <laughs> that staples are going to help you with those two. Oh, you're a great dog. Okay. All we can hope is that after that time comes and goes, that she's healthy enough to someday get a home that she so deserves. As I'm pulling one of the dogs out, there were plywood pieces that were still stuck under the sides, and if we didn't pull hard enough and get that dog out quick enough, the plywood is full of nails, and it was going to slam on top of the dog. Come on, puppy. Let's go. There's nails. Come on. We got to get out. They can't hold up much longer. Okay. Hold on, shot the in there. Oh my God. Okay. God. All right, let's regroup. Watch this holes behind you. With these two dogs, you know, secured safely in crates, that just leaves us one more, and that's the mama. Oh my God, her head is. a tarp. Hey, don't let her come out, Sean. Oh my God, she's moving her head. Yeah, there you go, Mariah. And her head showed up against that. Oh my God. It took Mariah trusting me. I'm on the outside looking under. I said, put your hand down with the rope. And, and, she, and she can't see. Blind faith, that meant a lot. Oh, she's getting it. Mariah's getting it. I think it's manhandle her like this. It's on. It's on. Pull it tight. It's on. Are you sure it's on? Yes, it's on. It's on. It's on. Okay. Here, I'll yeah. around. Okay. 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 Oh, my God. Oh, my God. She is strong. Here. Put the crane on the side of me. On the side of me. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Nice. Go, yeah. Mama. Yep. Put your foot. Put your foot. Oh my God. Oh, oh, oh that candle. Oh my God. Oh, let's oh, say. My God. Yeah, let's double check. Mariah, you. Mariah is the man. Because we all couldn't have done this without all of us. <laughs> Out of all my years of doing dog rescue, this was the most pressure I've ever, ever, ever had to deal with. I honestly, I did not think we were gonna catch him. You know, you just gotta have a little faith. And we love animals so much that we busted our asses tonight. I brought the crates out. But it... um, my name's Mike, I'm 32 years old. I was just released from prison about four months ago. My most recent charge was death. I was on drugs. I didn't actually need money. And I was sentenced to two and a half years in prison. I left at nine months with a year and a half parole. Enter. Enter my domain. Hey. I get up, but I'm, I'm crippled. <laughs> my, Hi. 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 The most difficult part about being released is finding a job. With my tattoos, my background, people are very judgmental. So you're, you're from 
New Orleans? Or yes, ma'am. Originally? Born and raised. Oh, are you? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Oh, wow. Okay. The neighborhood I grew up in wasn't too good of a neighborhood. The house that we lived in was constant fighting, drug use, drug sales. And I thought it was normal, and it's not. I lost my mother to cancer, and when we lost her, every, everything just crumbled. We started using drugs real heavy. Is it drug related? Yes, okay. And was it for sales or for, or for use? First time sales, second time use. So drug charges always make me nervous. I don't have to tell you because you were born and raised here, but New Orleans is a tough city to live in when you have any type of addiction. From alcohol to cigarettes to drug, it's tough. It's tough. It's like a sickness, a disease. It was, it was something I just I couldn't get away from. Every day I woke up trying to get the drug. I didn't care how I had to get it, what I had to do to get it. it I needed it in order to get up out the bed and move. I couldn't do nothing without it. You know, I get it. You know, I can get how someone would, would be here and get caught up in stuff. We keep a lookout all the time for any sign. My family has been raised around the prison life, so we, we know what happens. We know what can happen when someone falls back off the wagon. And hiring someone on parole who has a, a former serious, you know, drug habit, that to me is one of the most nerve-wracking things. Well, when, when did you get out? I've been out since December. Wow. I've been clean for almost two years now. I'm, I'm thriving. And then who do you live with family right now? I live by myself. Oh, you do? And then do you have like a immediate family that you have to take care of, or are you just on your own? I have two children. They're a little bit older, and I'm trying to get them back right now. The state never took them from me. It's just me working things out with the mother. Oh, OK. Rock bottom for me was definitely losing my children. When I lost them, I had nothing. I loved them very much. I will be back in their life very soon. I just need to get myself together. The one thing that I have seen for the people that work here is that being busy, making connections with a lot of the dogs that are here, and as they say, giving them something else to care for other than themselves gives them a reason. Even though Mike has a past you know, involving drugs in one way or another, Knowing that Mike has kids that he wants to reconnect with and be a good role model to, you know, that gives me hope. I have two rescue kids myself. Oh, you have two? Okay. What's your dog's names? Miles and Trina. Oh, okay. I, I'd love to be a part of this. I'd love to help. Wow. What I can do is this. Um, we'll have you show up and come tomorrow morning, like at 8, 8.30. Even though it is my personal issue about, you know, being a little apprehensive about someone with a past you know, drug history, you know, I'm willing to give anybody the benefit of the doubt. As long as you're just honest, honest with who you are, like, we'll never have a problem. You know, I do want to see Mike make it. You know, absolutely. I really, I really, you know, I like him. All right? Nice so I'll talk to you tomorrow then, okay? I, I would get up, it. but, you know, here I am. No problem. Here I am. I appreciate you giving okay. me a chance. Okay, Mike. I'll see you tomorrow. You down. All right. Well, I'm definitely making it big change in my life. It's not about me no more. It's my two children. They need to see that their dad's a better man and it's gonna be in their life.